there there's a place in the scripture where it talks about how when men lust after each other and that their bodies get the result of it and people say well is that AIDS look this is what I know that whatever you do that is unnatural that is not made for you will ultimately end up in destruction call it AIDS call it helps call it whatever you want to call it you will end up in destruction. It doesn't have to be the uh, immune, in, what is it, the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. It doesn't have to be that. It could be anything. But God has made this world in a way to follow itself. But you cannot go against the ways, the natural ways that God has created us. All right, that's enough of that. So, so God abandons them, one, for the reason that they're on their own and God will not allow them to recruit others using his power. But then, too, and then I'm done, it's, it's also the reality is that the world, the reprobates, are using everything they get to try and go to heaven in a go to go to hell in a crowd it says worse yet they encourage others to do them too now in other translations it says it says they applaud others who do the same things or something like that this is the same thing i love the new living because it just puts it out plainly it says they encourage others to do to go with them that makes me mad. That makes me angry. But you know who I'm angry at? I'm not as angry at the world as I am at the Christians. The world is trying to encourage other people to go to hell with them, but we ought to be encouraging the world to go to heaven with us. Christianity, salvation, is not for you. It's for your crowd. It's for your gang. It's for the, that, that, that circle of influence around you. When you get saved, when God changes your life, you've got to share it with somebody else. It's not just for you. God didn't take you through that miracle. God didn't remove that cancer. God didn't tell you about that car that was coming at just the right second so you could move out the way. God didn't do all of that so that you could say, oh, thank you, Jesus, and then go and play the record that you were playing. That's just God, God did that so that you have something to share. What does the world have to share? Talking about grasshoppers and frogs and all of that kind of stuff. They, they have useless idols. They don't have a good story to share. They look like they have a story. They walk like they have a story. They, they dress up in pretty clothes and sharp houses and stuff and make you think that they have a story to share. But at the end, it's destruction. It's wickedness. But we have a story to share. And it's about love and it's about morality. It's about justice. But we're not doing it. We're not doing it. And the truth is that the devil fools us into thinking that we're not smart enough. We think about Reverend Peavy or Reverend Ward or somebody like that. We say, oh, they have Reverend, Reverend Vanessa Ward. We think, that, oh, they have the erudition. They can, they can talk that talk and they can convince people. But you have your testimony. And your testimony does mean something. Your testimony does mean something. Your testimony is about what God has done for you. And that's what you ought to share with the world. The world is dying and we are sitting on our hands and doing nothing. How dare we? How dare we? God has been so good to us. 
God woke us up this morning. God started us on our way. God made a way for us to get safely here in traffic. God is opening up doors. God is opening up windows. God is getting me a new job. God is taking care of my wife and children. God is making our way out of no way for me. And how dare I get too shy, get too, too. I, 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 I just don't do that. I wish I'm praying for her. I'm, I'm, but if you have an opportunity to tell somebody about the goodness of God, how can they make you shame? How can they make you shame? You wasn't shame when you were calling on Jesus. I know I wasn't when I was in the hospital bed and I called on the name of the Lord. God answered me. And you know what? Every time I get the chance, I'm going to answer God. I'm going to tell somebody about what the Lord has done for me. I, You know, I share with you all all the time. I was in the hospital for 115 days, and God blessed me. And God blessed me in Miami Valley Hospital. God blessed me in a nursing home. God blessed me in Cleveland Clinic. And God got me all the way from Cleveland Clinic, nursing home, Miami Valley Hospital, to right here before you right now. I know that God is in the blessing business. What does the world have to talk about in comparison to that? I know that God can make a way out of no way. I know that God Almighty, He's a bad boy. I know that I don't have to fear cancer. I don't have to fear disease. I don't have to fear illness because my God, is on my side. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitted every groan. And I love Jesus. How about you? Don't let anybody, don't let some reprobate be telling your friends about how God doesn't really exist and how, well, we really created ourselves. What sense does that make? But how dare you allow anybody to talk about Jesus, to make the world think that he's just a nursery rhyme, to make the world think that he's just some fable that we made up to make ourselves go to sleep at night. But I tell you what, it does help me go to sleep at night because I trust in him. Tell the world, don't worry about me because I'm able to stand because the Lord stands up in me. Reprobate world, we've got something for you. That's the reason we're stirring the fire. That's the reason we're trying to be about God's work because the world needs to know that there is a God. The world needs to know, don't quit. The world needs to know, don't give up. But how can they know if God has been blessing us and we're being quiet about it? God wants for us to tell somebody.